Hi guys, welcome to Fashion Sketching 12. I'm um, ready to do a new episode, or episode, a new lesson. Um, uh, this is the first time I'm going to be drawing with a camera where my head should be, um, but hopefully it's helpful. Um, so what I have done is I set up a camera and I set up uh, just, just three really quick uh, rough sketches um, of... Uh, three little croquis. They're, they're not very big. As you can see, here's my hand for size. They're really like thumbnail size. Um, but what I'm going to do is I usually get a lot of questions for specific types of fabric. Um, and I wanted to highlight some of them in here, just a, a couple tips and tricks uh, when it comes to uh, different types of fabric. So I'm going to start on the first figure here on the left, and I'm going to do my best again. This is a little bit of awkward because I'm actually out to the side here. I'd usually be drawing right in, on top of this, but the camera's there. Um, and also, I don't have most of my art supplies because I left them at school. Um, and. Uh, we all know what happened there. Um, but I'm going to do my best. Again, um, I'm always a fan of using lots of different media and pretty much what's ever on, uh, uh, around, so um, it's kind of the way I draw anyways. So I'm going to start um, with this little figure here, and what I intend to do here, let me just sort of center that a little bit. Um, so the two fabric styles that are, or types that are going to be featured here are jeans and fur up here. Now jeans are very, very common and they're not really hard to draw, but there's a couple things to think about um, and a couple sort of tips and tricks um, to get it to really look like denim. Um, so what I'm going to use is, so denim is typically a dark blue, so um, my dark blue for today, as I left most of my markers at school, is going to be a dry erase marker. <laughs> Not your preferred drawing medium, but what are you going to do? We got to go ahead and go in it. So since I already have my pencil sketch out there, I'm just going to go in and start to color it in. It's actually not bad. Doesn't bleed as much as the other ones. I wasn't expecting it actually to be quite as nice, but it's not bad at all. It is a bit streaky, so I'm going over things um, a couple times, so I'm, I'm not getting a streaky color. It's rather an awkward position for my hand to be in but no complaining we must go on now um with the little wrinkles and things uh I'm not gonna go crazy because uh, these are gonna be fairly fitted jeans um, so there's not going to be a lot of sort of room for bulk or wrinkle, but the ones I'm doing sort of at the knees and maybe kind of at the ankles a little bit, they're going to be kind of sharp. So denim is a fairly stiff fabric, so in its shape when it wrinkles, I want to avoid kind of soft curves and go toward more towards sort of sharp angles and things like that. And still a bit streaky but that's okay because um what we're really gonna look for in jeans well, let's just smooth out that line is well, very streaky actually I take back what I talk about talk, good things I said about drawing with dry erase markers they're not that great but I'm not gonna worry too much about the streakies because um one of the characteristic things about denim is that I forget which whether it's the warp or weft, but only one of them um, has the actual indigo dye. Um, I believe it's the warp, um, so it's a twill weave, and then the weft has is white. So you don't see it as much because the uh, the one blue grain is much more dominant. 
but you do see these sort of flecks of white coming through. And in addition, this is also a really good time to note that on dark colors, if I were to go ahead and do all the little details in black, I wouldn't be able to see them very well. So what I'm gonna use is I have a white charcoal pencil here. And if that doesn't work, I have a white um, colored pencil as well. So whatever works best over your medium. Again, I'm not quite sure with this because it's dry erase, so I'm not sure what's gonna work well, but we'll try this. And I'm gonna go in and, and first I'm gonna just sort of do the little details. So here we have a waistband, we might have some belt, pocket. I can do a little top stitching, top stitching, or indicated at least on here. And of course I can do the outline. So we have this leg coming down in front. So maybe we have a little wrinkle there. I don't know. There we are. So I'm getting all of my little details in, maybe a little wrinkle there. And the last thing I want to do is just very lightly, so I was kind of using a heavy hand because I wanted a nice strong white line here, but softly, I'm just going to kind of tick in this kind of diagonal ribbing. Now remember, like I said, uh, remember we talked about our wovens um, at the beginning of the class. So. Um, Denim is no exception. Denim is a ribbing. Let me make it a little tighter up here. Um, and so you're going to get this sort of diagonal pattern from that twill pa uh, that twill weave. I'm going to show it in white. And it's that sort of little breaking into white. It's really going to make it feel um, like denim. Let's just clean up those belt loops. And there we have a nice little pair of denim denim pants right there okay so let's move on up to my fur now my fur um, I typically do fur in uh, brown uh, because that's a lot of times you know the natural color and, and, and we'll see it quite a bit but um, I don't know I want something a little brighter it's springtime out so I'm gonna do a sort of a pink fluffy fur uh, for the jacket and what I'm uh, anticipating is this gonna be um, fluffy fur and I'm gonna have sort of a little trim down here to bring it in there so I have my pink marker and um, what's important with fur is to give it a nice base color all over before you start to go in and texture. So if you just do texture and no base color, too much of the white of the page shows through and it doesn't look very good. It looks um, washed out. Um, typically fur colors can be very rich and things like that. So I'm going to go in with a base color with my Le Plume 2, meaning it has two tips. It has a brush tip and a detail tip. Um, because apparently I have a lot of pink media, too. I have some brown, but I have this pink mark. And I'm just going to go in, and again, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to mind it streaking too much, because again, I'm going to be putting a lot of texture in and over this. But I am going to kind of make it fluffy on the sides here. And I don't want too much white showing through. Now this color that I'm doing, I want it to be kind of the one of the lighter colors. It's actually turning out a little bit darker than I expected, which is okay. I can adjust my colors moving forward because I'm not trying to color match or anything right here. So again, it's okay that I make it kind of patchy and streaky. I just want to kind of eliminate the white. Again, and this will make my fur look rich. Now the other thing that I'm doing, which I'll emphasize again when I get into texturing, is I am making so sure that my outline is furry. Now, so much of the time when it comes to textures like fur or with uh, beads or sequins or things like that, um, you really have to emphasize that texture in the outline. Which I don't know. It was actually working out. This marker's a little bit dry, which a lot of times isn't bad um, because I'm getting a lot of lights and a lot of darks, which is kind of what I want anyway. 
And you have a little arm that's coming behind here so we don't see that much of it. Maybe a couple little just kind of peeking out there. But again, I want to eliminate, so I'm going softly over now any other last bits of that those white. Now that actually is pretty okay. Let me make this a little bit fluffier here. So again, I really want to kind of really emphasize how important it is with fur to emphasize the silhouette uh, or the outline. Um, so just as an example over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Kind of have that same sort of jaggediness, but I'm going to have a smooth line on the outside. So imagine this is the outside. And because I'm not making those jaggedy marks, it doesn't feel furry. It doesn't feel furry until I start to sort of bring it out like that. So again, outline is so important. Okay, so now that I have my base color, I can go in with different media, um, sort of uh, lighter and darker. Um, and I have a uh, pencil here. And um, it's a nice little just colored pencil. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and sort of tick off. And this is just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of texture, add a little bit of depth. So the reason you wanna do this is, um, especially kind of with getting sort of darker colors, is since fur is, is um, really plush, like it kind of goes down, it has the, all this texture and all this volume, it catches light really differently. So you know, um, deep within the fur catches a lot of shadow, um, and then right at top it catches a lot of light as well. And so you can see just by doing this I'm kind of just adding another layer to the texture making it look a little bit richer, a little bit deeper, and the nice fine point allows me to kind of also um, uh, re-emphasize uh, those shapes in the silhouette. So there I have, um, I think that's actually okay. I might, you know, sometimes I do more, sometimes I do less. It really depends on the fur. Um, if it's a dyed fur, um, I think this would be fine. I'm getting a lot of different tones in it. Um, if you're going for more natural fur, you might want to go with more different colors. So natural, um, like animal fur, has a lot of different sort of um, colors in it. So if, even if you look sort of just a, a typical brown fur, there's lots of dark browns and lots of light browns and a lot of almost like tawny yellows in it. And you kind of want to mix those all in to get that kind of very overall beautiful, rich um, uh, look of the fabric. So, um, down here, let's say that this is suede, so I get a lot of questions on how to do suede. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of put this in, and uh, basically suede or leather or anything like that is just like any other fabric. You, it just has a little bit of sheen and a little bit of two-tone. So if this was suede, I'm going to sort of switch from a darker to a, like a lighter color. So you know like suede, you kind of like brush it. I'm gonna work around. And it gets like darker, it gets lighter. I kind of want to work that in just by using two tones, okay? So we're gonna do that. And I like to use a colored pencil for that because it's, it's, I don't know, it kind of has this, the rough texture of the colored pencil really works well um, with showing that. Now I pretty much have my uh, garments um, done, so I'm ready to go ahead and fill in the rest. So um, this is sort of also, I promised you guys a little bit about faces and stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and do my faces. Unfortunately I only have a light skin tone. I have this right here, I'm going to test it just to make sure it doesn't look hideous. Oh it does, ooh, well. Uh, I think that's what I got to work with, unfortunately. I don't have any other, like I said, I'm a little low on supplies. What about this one? Oh no, that's bright orange. Um, okay, so, well, she's gonna be a little bit ashen, a little bit sickly, but um, what are you gonna do? So what I'm gonna do is when I fill it in, um, I don't really have, so again, I'm, I'm keeping everything super light, um, and what I'm gonna do, look, frantically looking for an eraser right now because I want to erase my eye line, but I can't find one so I guess I'm just going to leave the eye line in. 
Um, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to sort of try to outline the eyes and where they are and uh, just fill everything else in. Uh, and this is, of course, because... Oh, that looks terrible. Uh, the pencil is not sharp enough. And I'm at a weird angle. Oh, well, I'll fix it. In. I thought I had an eraser in here. All right, I guess I can't make any mistakes. <laughs> I'll fix it in ink um, because I don't know where my eraser is. Hopefully I have one. Um, let me just go oh, well, in here real quick. Haha, -ha. I got a crappy one, but it'll work. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more space in between here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is when I ink, and I'm gonna be very careful because since I am using this um, uh, char pack marker, they bleed like crazy. I'm gonna leave way more than needed for my eyes. And of course we do that because the eyes are white. Just sort of poke in a little bit of color there. Oh, this is a terrible, terrible skin tone. Oh well. So I'm gonna sort of just come in here because there is going to be a space between the eyes and I almost you know kind of grid it out and this is okay because we can always go back and kind of fill it in but we can't take the marker away and this is actually even especially more important if you're using a very dark skin tone um, uh, because of course we do want those eyes to still be page white or else of course we don't really have eyes um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of do a little bit like that and I'm gonna wait for just a second maybe do the um, hands we don't have another hand um, because it's gonna bleed out so I want to wait to sort of see you can see you can probably round it out a little bit here maybe a little bit over here again I'm not going to go crazy because once I ink it even if there are spots that are still light it's going to be okay be a little bit wider in here okay so um, I have those white spots that are left for the eye I'm going to wait again for it to bleed out and um, I can sort of pop on over to the hair um, so for the hair Let's see what kind of colors I have. Well, I have a yellow, so I can do a kind of a bleach blonde. Um, and again, we want to focus on the shape. So I already have a bit of a shape here. Now with lighter colors like this, you can leave a bit of a shine if you want it to look shiny and again so you'll have to determine your hair so as I mentioned I always like to have my light coming down like this because that's how my hands work I'm right-handed so I keep the highlights on that side of the face and I'll just leave a little bit of white right there where it's hitting typically I don't often with light colors like this end up um, doing too much of a bother with shine because again since it's light it doesn't really show up that well anyways I'll typically leave a nice shine for darker colored hairs all right all right let's inky and then we'll do maybe some shoes maybe we'll put some sneakers on her yeah so um, whenever I ink the face, I try to use my most fine of points of uh, black marker, um, which I hope I have. I thought I had a nice super fine. Here we are, super fine. Can you see that? Um, it's worn off, so I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it is nice and fine. I'm getting a very fine, delicate line. You don't want to do heavy lines on the face details. It tends to look clunky and smudged. Uh, I'm also going to use this fine marker on here, or this fine pen, just to kind of give you a little bit of an outline. So we don't have much of an outline here, and I'm not gonna do a line, of course. I'm going to most certainly keep and just emphasize that jagged line. And I'm gonna keep it kind of broken, and I'm gonna keep it light, because I don't want this to look, I want it to look fluffy, and I want it to look light, but I still wanna get that benefit of that nice sort of black outline uh, uh, in what it gives me. It gives me that sort of 
that sense of completion, that feeling of completion, um, kind of wrangles everything in, it, it makes it stand out. Um, always, always try to have that nice black outline. I'm gonna do a little hand here. So remember we do one, two, three, one, two, a little, little something like that, maybe a little finger out here. So this is also you kind of a good, you know, uh, you guys a lot of times are like, what are thumbs and how do I do them? Maybe this separates right here. We have the closure here. Let me show that break there. Um, this is actually a really good example of your thumbs. I'm kind of taking a long time on it, but um, you see that they're kind of small and quick. So now what I'm going to do, um, uh, my hands are kind of, so you can see the little black outline I did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the eyes first. Like I said in the video, I typically always start with the eyes and I'm going to focus on the shape of them. I'll usually start with the tops like that and a little bit of a bottom okay um, and so what I'm gonna do when I do the um, uh, little pupils and stuff because it looks weird to just have hollow eyes but it's so small what I'm basically just gonna do is I'm just gonna dot I'm gonna dot in there just a little bit and what it does is it sort of indicates both the iris And, um, but also keeps a shine. Let me see that. Let's I'm gonna kind of bring it in a little bit. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's finish it off because it looks a little weird without anything else. Uh, certainly without eyebrows. So I'm going to put in some eyebrows. Just a little dash for the nose. And I'm going to do a little bit of a mouth. just sort of like that and let's go ahead and do ink in the hair now as well so this kind of comes in here and we see a sort of whoosh whoosh I'll fix up that mouth in a minute Looking a little a little on but maybe we have a little bit of an ear that we can see oh we got a little big Let's ink out the rest of her face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shade a little bit of the top lip. Now if I have any other sort of splotchy parts that uh, uh, I don't like. I can go back in and um, adjust them. Um, but for right now, it's okay. Um, let's do those sneakers real quick. Doo -doo -doo. Push it on up. And so basically what I can do, I don't have any sort of layout for them yet. Um, these, The croaky itself was for high heels, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit and widen it out. Kind of just get the uh, basic shape of them. And they're going to be a little less long than my original sort of croaky form that was for high heels. Race away. Um, let's just do them white. So I'm going to ink it in. I'm going to use something a little bit thicker. And you notice I didn't do a black line here on the pants. I can, so here, but as you can see, it just doesn't really show up that well because um, the uh, blue is so dark, so it doesn't really matter. But here, let's go ahead. So again, we're gonna start with that sort of round part. I can put in a little bit of a sole texture if I want. Doo -doo -doo. And what I'm gonna do is uh, just go straight to the tongue and we have our little eyelets. Again, since they're small, I'm not doing the full sort of C within a C. I'm just doing one little C. And actually, since it is so small, I'm going to switch on down, since this is a finer part to my finer tip. Do, do, do. Sort of something like that. Do, do, do. And we can put in, oh, I don't know, 
some little seaming or whatever else. Um, and let's, just to think about composition, let's make the laces pink. Nice little echo back to our pink fur. Maybe the soles too. Ah, that's cute. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna do my sneakers up here too. And again, we see a little bit more. So this is, I'm not gonna waste too much time. This is going back in the background, but we're gonna see, you know, a little bit of that lace here. And we're gonna see a little bit more of the shoe kind of come around here. Um, we'll see less of the sole. Maybe I'll just put like a little hint of it kind of coming around the side like that. But um, again, since this is basically, this leg is up and facing backwards, we're not gonna see quite as much. I'm gonna make those laces pink because I thought that was a nice idea. Okay, so um, the last thing I gotta do is shade it. So I'm gonna start with, oh, what do I got? Do I have a cool gray number one? Well, I have a cool gray number two. I have a cool gray number two. Um, I usually like to start with the lightest grays and then work up. Of course, you can always go darker, but it's very hard to go lighter. Oh, I do have cool gray number one. So um, remember that when we go ahead and uh, do our croquis, we're gonna go ahead and, um, let me move that into place, uh, pick a light direction. So I'm gonna pick this, as I typically always do, that means this side's gonna be in light and this side is gonna be in shadow. So the first thing I do is pretty much everything on this side, that is my cool gray number one, is gonna get a shadow. So I'm gonna get a little shadow over here or certainly this is gonna be in shadow. Now if this is not showing up, like it might not show up that well because it's a lighter gray, I'm gonna go ahead and, and choose a darker gray. Um, so you can see how well it shows up on the yellow and a little bit on the pink. Now not only am I doing everything on this side, but I'm doing, if anything splits, like this arm here splits, I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. Just put in that little shadow right there. And I'm gonna sort of hair, uh, fringe it out as well. So um, I'm gonna see now, I'm gonna bump all the way up to a cool gray number five for the pants. And now we're beginning to see a little bit of shadow. My, it, don't worry about it, you know. Doesn't have to be crazy. And uh, let's pop on back to the cool gray number one for the shoes. Okay, so that's everything on one side, which is sort of the first step. Now what I want to take a look at is everything that kind of juts out. So what juts out? Our chin juts out. That means we get a shadow here. Also, we have all this fluffy stuff here, so I'm gonna go ahead and shade kind of inside here, because that'll cast a shadow down on my skin. Um, behind the hair, this kind of juts out, so I'm gonna kind of shade in here. You can shade a little bit of the face too if you're feeling brave. A little bit of the nose or whatever else. This is awful tiny to do that. Um, what else juts out? These pants jut out over the shoe, so I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow right there. This whole thing is um, behind, so anything that kind of um, goes behind the figure, so this is in front, this is uh, behind, you're gonna uh, shade, so I shaded that entire shoe. And I'm gonna pop on back to my cool gray and kind of fill in some of these little things here and I'm gonna continue on and I'm gonna shade a lot more of this pant right in here just to um, get it to drop back um, uh, behind the figure. Maybe a little bit right here because this is right behind the figure. Okay, so now it's shaded and done, completed. Um, we have uh, fur and denim. So, um, let me add an angle, we can sort of go like this. And let's pop on over to our next one. Uh, this one I wanna show you, Maybe we'll do something a little bit more fun. I was gonna show you just sort of black jacket. Maybe I'll show you how to do like a, a, a shiny, like a satin, shiny satin, uh, uh, black, and a uh, sheer down here. So a lot of people's, how do I make things look sheer? How do I make it look see-through? Um, and this is actually step one for lace, which we may do another day. 
you guys. And again, um, if you guys want me to show you anything, please let me know. Please, please, please let me know. We might just get done with this because um, running on. <laughs> you guys will laugh at me, but I'm actually recording this on like physical tape. I know I'm from like the 90s or the 80s, but um, I have found a way to sort of retrofit this camera, and I, I really had no other option to be able to get these these sort of close-up shots. Um, but the tape is only about an hour long, so. <laughs> Anywho, um, uh, blast from the past. If you guys have never watched anything on tape, you're watching it on it now. Um, okay, so I want this sh sh skirt to basically be like a gray, sheer, flowing thing. So basically what happens when you have a sheer fabric and it kind of flows out like this is it bunches up here at the kind of waist and hips, and then as it flows down, and let's make it even flowier, why not? Let's make it super full and just fun. Um, as it flows out, it starts to kind of separate from itself. It's not as condensed, and you can see through it easier. So um, when that happens, uh, we start to see the skin more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my skin tone. This is really important whenever you're using, uh, doing shears. You want to start with your skin tone and layer it on t underneath um, whatever is going to be your sort of sheer fabric. Now it's going to be less sheer up here, so I'm going to kind of bring it down. I guess this, the, this marker dries a lot better then. So I kind of bring it up like this. Again, that's going to be kind of where we stop seeing it. And then we're going to put her in high heels, but they're going to be black, so I'm going to just do the whole thing so I kind of have an idea of uh, where it is. But again, I'm just going to kind of brush it up, fill it in more solidly where we can see it. Jeez, oh, I hope that dries better. It's not too bad, I guess. Um, so again, we're sort of fading it up here um, where it's going to be less see-through-y. So again, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on over to a gray marker. And again, this is going to be whatever color your shear is. Now, if you don't have a, a correct marker or the marker seems too opaque, like it's not going to allow the um, skin tone to show through, um, you can use colored pencil. And again, I use colored pencil a lot um, uh, for sheer garments. Sometimes when you have sheer with like a mesh, the texture, the added sort of texture of colored pencils can work really well. Just kind of gently rub it over um, uh, and you still get that actually I'm gonna use I'm gonna use kind of broad strokes coming from here and the idea of this is that I want I'm gonna use I'm not gonna be too careful because this is gonna be black so I don't need to be super careful up here I'm gonna use the streaks. So when we have this type of like um, sheer skirt, we're gonna get lots of sort of different layers of gray because every time a sheer fabric kind of folds on itself, you get a sort of different darker color. Now you can already see sort of how this is working, but now I'm gonna switch to a slightly darker and kind of start to put in some more streaks and more folds. And you're gonna want this to be kind of really streaky. So I'm even, you know, a streaky marker wouldn't even be bad. And I'm gonna pop, that was a two. What else do I got? I got a three, I might stop at a three. And just do the kind of, and again, for the darker ones, remember it's darker up here, so I'm gonna keep it darker a little bit more at the top. And just let this kind of flow down. Really just showing every time we might have a little bit of um, the skirt uh, overlapping itself, it's going to get a bit darker. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, finish up down here with uh, inking it. I'll ink it. I got an 8 right here. It's probably not going to be too thick. Hopefully. Hopefully. 
And again, I just want to show a lot of those drapes kind of coming up. And the fact that it is layering and on top. Okay, plugged in. So I can start again. So there we have our sheer skirt. And as we can see, we sort of see that skin tone sort of peeking in, um, uh, allowing us to sort of get that sense that it's sheer. And again, the most important part, like I said, is the fact that we can see um, uh, that skin tone beneath it. Now what I'm going to do is going to put her in just like um, a little bit of heel. So again, I'm going to sort of work out the toe. Let's a standard pump maybe. We'll toe like that. Bring it up and I'm going to follow the kind of croaky shape pretty closely. And this goes behind actually so I'm going to, uh, the way I drew it is a little confusing but it'll, it'll come back in ink and well, let's ink this skin too just to outline give her an ankle. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to do 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 just a little something like that. Very simple, simple heels from the front, don't need a lot. And just color that in and do similar right here. So we have the same little shoe. Actually, that has a different sort of thing here, so I'm going to just correct that to look more like that. And these this pen doesn't like to fill in. These are better for lines. Just a little tedious filling in spaces with them. Now, I'm not going to outline the leg that you can see here because I kind of want to keep it soft. Okie dokie. So let's move up to the um, jacket. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna assume, okay, that it is shiny. So what makes something shiny? So it's gonna be a satin blazer, super shiny. Um, what I need to do is really understand how the light is gonna fall on it. So when something is shiny, it's basically shiny because uh, it has really hot, uh, light highlights um, as opposed to their sort of dark areas. So again, when something is shiny, it has high highlights and low, low lights. It's not sort of matte. It has that, you know, highly reflective um, kind of surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, again, my light's going to come this way, it, to sort of pick out the spots that that light is really going to be focused on, is going to be um, uh, uh, highlighted on. And I'm going to kind of work them in with my pencil and then now when I go with my black again this is black shiny I'm going to fill in everywhere but those areas and let's find an appropriate tool for that don't want to use a nice pen I think I'm going to use this brush pen if it still has ink in it okay pretty good now this is uh, as you can see why I was not too concerned with putting the gray too high. Oh, I forgot my hand. Oops. Maybe I can stick it in afterwards. And I'm just gonna go along, fill it in. This isn't the best on ink. It's a little dry. But I'm gonna keep a lot of those highlight areas white. Now if you're not sure, again, keep more than you think is necessary because you can always fill it in in the end. You can always fill it in with black in the end, but unfortunately you can't go back and take the white out. Well, that's not true. I, I'll actually show you a way to sort of add the shine if you, if you do forget or you want to add a little bit more. We're going to go ahead it's getting a little tiny. I might switch over to something a little finer point and a little bit more solid because this is a little bit not so great. What else do I got in here? Yeah, I got this one. This might be a little bit better. Oh, at least it has ink in it. Yeah, that's nice. Let's 
see if we can put a... It's right behind her. <laughs> I know I have a lot of highlight right here on this shoulder. It's right where the light is coming from. shadows on the, or highlights on the lapel, not shadows. Now, um, you might be saying, hey, this is great, Kate, for a black and shiny. All right, I get it. We we're going to emphasize the highlights, but what if I do if I have a white shiny? Is it the, sort of the same thing? And it kind of is. Um, just, of course, when you have a black shiny, you want to be emphasizing the highlights, because that's kind of what you can do. Um, if you have Let's say a little bit like that. So we have the highlight coming down here. Um, so if you have a white, you can emphasize the highlights because it's white. You have to sort of emphasize the shadows and the shadows are gonna be typically a little bit darker um, than necessary. So again, whatever you have, uh, you're going to be working with as extremes because of course that's what makes it shiny. Now let's go in here and I'll prep this too since I got the skin tone out. I'm gonna try to make this better than the other face. I don't really like the other face. <laughs> Okay, so um, we can leave some areas white, but what we want to do is we want to kind of transition it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, grab a dark gray and kind of start to kind of blend the different areas in there. So I'm going to kind of bring it because we don't want such a stark transition between the darks and the, and the highlights. Let's, that was two. Let's pop on to two. And kind of just fade it in there. And um, sometimes what we can do is we can, um, depending on how shiny we want it, uh, the highlight might not be white. So if it's, I can go to maybe like a cool number one. Did I lose it? No, here it is. Uh, and fill in the rest of the whites, and it'll still look shiny. It just won't look quite as shiny. Again, because I'm reducing the distance between, or the difference between those absolute highlights and those absolute low lights. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this one to kind of just blend it in again. I don't want it to be quite so stark, the difference. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this to kind of just blend. Now if I had a darker gray, it would have been better to use, but I, I don't. Again, I'm gotta use tricks instead of materials. So I'm just gonna sort of soften that transition. Okay, now um, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that white charcoal pencil um, and put in my details because of course I can't see any of my details. Ooh, that is too thick. So you always want something really, really sharp. Um, and I either did, didn't sharpen it again from my pants. And I got this sort of very clumsy line. Um, but that's okay because um, I can go back and fix it just by filling in a little bit of the black there to sort of make that line a little less clumsy and thick. Okay. 
Okay, sharpened. Hooray. And let's go. We have a little couple of that. I might have an armhole seam if I have a little wrinkle or something over here, if I have my arms. And of course I want to be able, oops, not too sharp. I want to be able to see the actual, I'm gonna make it even though. Now again, if it is a little bit thick or a little bit clumsy, you can always go back, oop, wrong one, and make it a little bit more slender. Now you can also use this to sort of add back some shine if you want. So if I wanted to sort of add back a little shine, or I say, oh, you know what, this arm really should have gotten more shine, I can kind of bring that in there. And it also can help to sort of blend in the shine as well. Okay, so there's our shiny satin. Um, uh, let me just finish off this figure and I think I'll be done for today. I meant to do one more with a knit and a stripe. Um, but looking at the time, I think I'll save that for tomorrow. So uh, again, let's do the face. I'm gonna choose my very fine marker or pen. And I'm gonna try to do a better job, honestly. Start with the eye. All right, it's already looking a little bit better. So I'm gonna show you, I actually left a little bit of space. This is kind of like an anime style to leave a little bit of space from uh, the bottom lid to the top lid. And um, let's do curly hair. We did straight hair. Do I have a nice sort of brown color or black? Well, I have black. We can give her black curly hair. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm just gonna dot the pupils. A little bit of eyebrow. A little dash for the nose. A little bit of a mouth. There we go. And let me get a nice black and we will give her some black curly hair. So um, I was mentioning before with darker hair, you want to, it's more important to leave a little spot for shadow. So um, if you want, you can go straight into it. If not, if you're feeling little, you can kind of give a shape. Remember shape, the shape of the hair is more important than anything else. So I can kind of give a little bit of my, uh, uh, an idea of how the hair is gonna be shaped. I can also give a little bit of, oh, where is that highlight gonna be? And it's gonna be kind of on this side. Remember the light's coming down from here. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of sort of white chunks, which I might soften with a gray, depending on how it looks. But I'm going to really keep on with that shape and that texture. Probably gonna soften that a little bit more and sort of define it. This is kind of clunky. This fine point has sort of lost its fine point or this brush point has sort of lost its tip. So it's a little bit clunky. And I'm just gonna leave a little, uh, just a hair, a hair of space of white between the actual hair in the jacket, because since they're both black, I want it to stand out. So okay, I'm gonna leave this sort of patchy white in here. Now I'm definitely gonna have to refine all this with a, a finer point, but this is good for the, now it's gonna be mostly dark here, because again, it's not in the side that would hit the light. So I'm gonna get and still, again, want to emphasize that sort of curly texture. Now she looks from the 80s. I'm just gonna go back with my fine point to sort of refine these guys a little bit. Refine this line here where the face is. Maybe give her a chin and a neckline. 
And again, because I have a little bit of space there, I'm still getting a difference of definition between the jacket and the hair. And I can add a couple more curls or things like that. I have this little curl coming down here. I'll add a little curl coming down here. There we go. It's cute. Maybe one right here. Oh, I'm getting crazy with the curls now. It's too many curls. All right, let's shade it. I think I'm gonna leave those nice and white. She doesn't need a ton of shading because she's mostly black and we've already emphasized highlights. So again, on, on generally darker things, you wanna uh, emphasize highlight more. I didn't emphasize a lot of highlight on the denim over here because it's dark. Um, or it's matte, I'm sorry, it's matte. Um, so let's give her a little bit of shading. This cool gray number one again. Start with your light grays. She's gonna have shadow here on the face here. It's gonna come around again. The neck juts out. And her hairs are pretty full. Maybe I'm gonna give her a little bit of shadow right there for the nose, right there for the arm. Um, We'll pop on down to the legs. If you want to do a little bit more shading, this is already kind of shaded, but I'll just, I'll pop on over and we ended with what, with the cool gray number three. So let's, I'm gonna go over that again with the cool neck number three, just to emphasize one, maybe any shadow that the jacket is casting on top of the skirt, and this, and Maybe a couple more just to emphasize the folds. Again, that'll dry a little bit lighter than what it looks like right now. But there we are, that's our finished um, second figure. Uh, sheer and uh, we were able to see a little bit of uh, sneakers at least I gave you a little bit better because this is actually really hate that face <laughs> but they can't always be good guys at least it was a fairly good tutorial on fur and denim um, uh, sheer and shiny um, over here I was going to do knit and stripe um, maybe with some leather or, or uh, uh, a little bit better on suede for the boots or whatever um, but I'm going to uh, leave that for tomorrow um, and again, if you have any uh, questions um, or suggestions on fabric types that you want to see, I want to see sequins, I want to see beads, I want to see laces, I want to see whatever it is, um, let me know and I'll make a video. Um, so, signing off for now, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, uh, stay healthy, stay safe.